Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Babbitt in the building! Yeah. Let's go! <laughs> Dude, we have been trying to set this up for a long time, as you know, but it is an absolute pre pleasure of you joining, sir. Um, for real. Yeah, just, man. Just thank you so much. First, I want to start off with, we're, I want to do a variety of topics today, but I would like to start with the news. Where, where are you right now? What, what, what concert are you at? Oh, I'm at Warp Tour, and there's a reason I chose the Warp Tour, but we'll get to that later. We'll discuss that. Okay. I, I do want to start with uh, with the new single, Hate Myself, which is such a strong title for a single. Can you can you go into the writing that went into this particular single? Yeah, so the whole, the whole new record, like the overarching theme of it is just all about rebirth and growth and and maturing and like killing that old dark part of you that you know all of us in our early 30s now at this age especially after the pandemic and thinking that everything was going to end and finding a whole newfound appreciation for the opportunities we've had since i mean we've all been on the road since we were 16 years old so we've never had a break i mean me personally i finally got sober which, you know, was a problem I kind of in the back of my head knew I had. But once COVID hit, I, I had no more excuses for it. I wasn't on the road. I didn't have a tour manager carrying me back to the bus. I, I No more excuses. Oh, you know, they bought me too many shots at the bar. My bad. It was just me. And facing myself and looking at myself in the mirror and realizing how much time had gone by. So with that being said, when we were writing this song, the very first line of the song that ended up not making it to the final version was I'm a piece of shit is how the song started off. And so that kind of was the basis behind it. Um, but it was also a coy way of finding strength within yourself, because when you hate things about yourself, you have to learn how to love yourself to not hate those things anymore. So the person I'm talking about hating more than myself is that other side of me, the, the part of me that wasn't me, you know, the part of the parts of me that I needed to kill to uh, to mature and move forward in life in a happier and healthier way. So, so when you say a darker themed album, we can kind of expect similar lyrical content for other tracks on the upcoming album. Oh, for sure. There's there's some tracks that don't necessarily go to that realm, but a lot of them a lot of them do is the overarching theme of it so that's kind of what we based like i'd say a good 80 80 percent of the album around how does how does an escape the fate song start from scratch like take me to to the jam room and the, all the boys are hanging out and it's time to write a new song so this one we just all got together at at Eric's studio, we just kind of vibed off of each other. But how we've always worked is everyone kind of works on some ideas. And then when we get together, we kind of throw all those ideas at each other, see what kind of sticks, see what we feel like is strong enough that we want to work off of. And a lot of the times it's, it's usually the guys that come up with the music that I'm constantly bugging, like, Hey, send me a Dropbox link of all the songs so I can get to work on some vocals. Um, but every now and then, you know, like, for example, the I Am Human record, that song was just a voice memo I had. So I had the melody, I had the lyrics, uh, and I sent it to Thrasher at the time. And he was like, I love this. Let me build a song around it. It's interesting. So that's kind of how all the albums work. Okay. Uh, I, my co-host is Lizzie, Queen Lizzie. I'm going to let her g get a question or two Hi, in Lizzie. a second. Uh, hey. <laughs> before I do, you actually segued into something. Uh, I've seen Escape live probably five or six times. You always kill it, brother. But I, I didn't Thank see you. I didn't see Thrasher, and there was like there's an internet rumor of why or why not he's not in the group. But I'm just curious, why is he not in the group anymore? So it it was very weird for us, especially given our history, where you know people are kind of up in arms and 
and quitting the band for weird reasons and things of that nature. But this time around, it was not, he never quit and the band never kicked him out. It was kind of just going back to the COVID thing, which my God, I hate bringing it up and talking about it still. But um, Travis Barker ended up having Kevin come in and work in his studio. And Kevin kind of cemented himself in that position. And it's a passion he's had producing and working on music for a very, very long time. And so once touring started opening up again slowly, he had all this work on his table still in the studio. And so it got to the point after touring for almost two years straight after the pandemic with Maddie, where we started talking about, we need to start working on a new album. What's going to happen with the, you know, updated photos and updated videos, like what's going on. So when I brought it up to Kevin again, he's like, Hey man, wherever you guys need me, I can be there. I just can't, I can't do the grinding and the touring all the time anymore. Um, you know, and when it came to that point, it was just kind of a natural separation. So the last I had asked Kevin about it, I said, do you want to include a quote or something? You know, maybe when the band posts the new group photo with all the official touring members and all everything like that, would you like to include a quote so that everybody knows everything's kosher? And he's like, well, what kind of quote? I'm like, well, exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> like the fact that you're focusing on, on your, new marriage and your new baby and and being in the studio what kind of albums are you working on and obviously there's no bad blood i'm sure the fans would like to know you know for sure there's no bad blood so i think a quote would be good to provide them and he just never sent over a, a quote and so now it's uh you know it's just like a a like on a post here and there and a reply to an instagram story here and there and you know the etf grind continues from our end Absolutely. Lizzie, uh, what question do you have for Craig? Um, I wanted to start off with your Twitch community um, and your Discord community. I've been following you there myself for, I think it was like a year um, awesome. that my sub Thank was. Um, and then just recently joined the Discord, but I love your, your community um, between yours and Rob's, how they all kind of mesh together really well. Um, yeah. How has that helped you as far as touring and meeting, you know, all these people from the internet all of a sudden, like they're real, like how does that help you um, with your, like the morale of touring and stuff? Oh, it, it, it helps tremendously in, in so many different ways. I mean, number one for me personally, I, what what the hell else was I going to be doing during during all that pandemic stuff? You know what I mean? So it was a way to keep in touch with the fans um, and just have something to do. And especially going back to I said I, I got sober during the pandemic and in April, I'll be three years. That helped a lot because when I sit there by myself and I get stuck in here for too long, that's the worst place to be. So if I'm being active I'm, I'm surrounded by a positive community and I'm, I'm doing something I've always loved doing in the first place, aside from music, which is playing video games, then it's a tremendous help. And even when I was nervous about getting back on the road because of all that stuff, it's helped in that way because I just bring out my laptop and I just stream all day before, before sound check and then the show. And, you know, sometimes I'll try to go live on my phone and I just try to keep it going out on the road and it, it really, really helps. And in return, I get people telling me that, Hey, I love this community. It's really helping me. And, you know, the AA meetings I go to, that's, that's what sobriety is all about is being of service to others. And sometimes helping others is how you help yourself. So it's, it's all love. And I'm, I'm so grateful for Twitch being a platform that people can find each other and create communities on. And it's so funny that me and Robert's respective channels mesh with each other because me and him are such polar opposites. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we come, to, we come together in the band and it's, it's funny because our, the community can see that we're polar opposites and it's funny. We're like an old, old married couple that hates each other, but will never leave each other and loves each other at the end of the day. You know what I mean? That is hilarious. Right. 
speaking speaking of video games, uh, you got you released Dead by Daylight, and I'm just curious what it was like to work with your son. Is that the first time oh, that you had was... had him involved in your music? Yes, that was the very first time. Um, well, no, I I can't say exactly the first time. Um, cause she was in the studio at a very, very young age, like giggling before solo and zombie dance. Um, and I always snuck it into the lyrics. Like it's just me on the, this war is ours album. Um, I say Layla Rose, you're my soul. And that's, you know, that's not what she likes to go by anymore, but that's fine. But I've always tried to try to include the kids in what I do. Cause it's, music was always my dream and, and something that I wanted to be involved in and accomplish. And I feel like I was able to do that. Although I feel like sky's the limit and there's still a lot more I want to accomplish. Um, you know, that kid in his room that didn't think he would be able to do what I've been doing for the past decade. If my kids ever feel that way, I want them to know that you, you can do anything that you want to do. Hell in yeah. life. You just got to set your mind to it. So although music pulls me away from them a lot, I hope that they can see, you know what? I can do anything in my life because my dad showed me that I can. And obviously if music pulls me away from them, I'm going to include them in it as much as humanly possible. You know, that is awesome advice. I have a, I have a little bit of an old, old school question, but that's why I have the warp tour photo behind me. I've I've been a Bless yeah. the Fall fan for many years. His last walk is one of Dude, my I top. I couldn't get my PC. I couldn't get Microsoft Teams to work on my PC, so I'm on my phone. So I just have a green screen. That's all good. It I works. Have a cool background. It's, it's all good. No <laughs> no worries. Uh, but yeah, his last walk is one of my favorite albums of all time. Uh, I never really understood why at that moment it just says personal reasons why why you walked away. But it was such a good project, and I know I'm just curious what what mentally were you going through, if you're willing to say, uh, of why you walked away from Bless the Fall. Well, that's kind of where the alcoholism began. We uh, see. I I want to word it in a way where I'm not speaking badly about those guys because it wasn't anything they were necessarily doing. And this is what I see looking back on it now being older, they weren't doing anything on purpose, but it was just, we came from different parts of town. I came from a part of Arizona that was very lower middle class. So I guess I, I didn't have a lot of money. So we go out on the road and you know, these guys in the band, they had parents that were providing them and we were very young. We were like 15, 16 years old hitting the road in a van. They had parents that would provide them with like a card to go on the road. Oh, well, you know, if you ever need any food or any emergencies, here you go. They had money. I had absolutely nothing. So even our first few tours, it was very rough on me, especially having my first child freshly 18. Um, that just made it exponentially harder. So once we got out on the road in the UK overseas for the first time, and this is back when Wi-Fi wasn't necessarily a thing. Like if I wanted to call back home and check on my kid, I needed to find a, a gas station and buy a calling card and then find a I remember those days to call back yeah. home. Yeah. <laughs> so there was a lot of personal things going on back home and, and over in the UK, although I was underage in the US, I was old enough to drink. And I remember being so freaking stressed out and somebody coming up to me and going, Can I buy you a beer? And I said, I'm not old enough. And they're like, you are here. I'm like, well, <laughs> All right, yes, cool. you may buy me. <laughs> and I remember a couple beers in, all the stresses were gone. I didn't, whatever. I was having a good time. I'm like, I'm young. I'm over in the UK. And then you wake up the next morning and you feel like crap. And the anxiety and the depression and all the things you were stressed about the night before, it's even worse. So what do you do? You look for a drink. And that was the start of it. And that's how it was off and on till COVID hit. And it was it was horrible. But there was a moment on that tour where I saw the path that I was headed down. And I knew we were coming home with like no money after a month and a half. And I kind of had a crisis. And I was like, you know what? 
this is amazing. I can't believe I've made it this far in such a short amount of time where I got to start a band and I ended up on tour. And now here I am overseas playing in the UK. And we were on tour at the time with Silverstein. I'm like, dude, I used to watch these guys' videos just a year and a half ago and wonder how I could ever do it. Now I'm in a tour bus with them. This is nuts. So at the time I was like, maybe I've accomplished all I can, but maybe this isn't, this isn't for me. Maybe I'm at a point in my life where I need to just go home and focus on, on being a dad because, you know, we had a manager at the time just stealing money from the band. I was coming home with nothing. So I I flew home. I was like, I can't, I can't do it. Maybe this is not for me. And the guys at the time really supported me and said, yeah, go home, figure it out. We can tell you've been stressed out um, and just keep in touch. We'll figure it out. Once I got home, uh, spent some time with my kid and looked at some options. I was like, no, you know what? I need to focus on this at least, at least as much as I can for the next album cycle. Like who knows what can happen? So when I reached out to the guys again and said, hey, you know what? I've, I've caught my breath, so to speak. I'm ready to go. They were like, well, you know, we, we kind of don't really want you back. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Fair enough. And then we had just <laughs> finished the tour with a Skylit Drive. I was going to ask about that too. I was going to ask how close you yeah. were to actually joining a Skylit Drive. Pretty close. I mean, I had, I was talking to Joey, their guitar player. He was sending me demos. And it was like, he already wanted me in. So I called him to ask him a question about a song I was already working on. And then I was going to go out to California, record it. And then it was going to be a done deal. Like I was, that was the new band I was going to move forward with was a Skylit Drive. And I had a little Nokia phone and I scrolled down to Joey. Phone started ringing. Wrong Joey. Oh, wow. The the Joey I had called was the Joey manager of Escape the Fate. I had gotten his number when Escape the Fate and Bless the Fall uh, did our black. So wait, black wait, 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 hold, wait. Hold, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Is this how you came to join Escape the Fate? Was an accidental wrong Joey? An accidental. Complete accident. Called the wrong Joey. Getting on the phone with Joey. He's like, wait a second. Who is this? And I was like. It's Craig. I'm trying to get that track. He's like, track from who? I said, a Skylar Drive. And he's like, Craig, bless the fall, Craig. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, bro, this is Joey ETF's manager. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, shit, my bad, dude. He's like, why are you trying to get a Skylar Drive songs right now? I explained to him what was going on. Mm -hmm. and I said, okay, I got nothing going on. And it was uh, the Bamboozle Festival, Extreme Thing in Las Vegas, and a headliner at Chain Reaction. So I was like, all right. He flew me out to Vegas. I rehearsed with the guys. We played Extreme Thing. The guys were really, really excited about it. We played Bamboozle. I like did this ginormous jump off the stage that you can still find on YouTube. And I remember they were doing an interview after the show. And I was kind of just standing in the background to watch them do it because I'm not in the band. I'm not going to do an interview. Uh, and the interviewer said, so it's is Craig the new singer? Are you guys moving forward like this? And I remember my polar opposite, Robert, is the guy that said, yeah, he's in if he wants to be in. We want him. This is this is how we want to move forward. Wow. And then everything Aww. from there just even more weirdly fell into place because getting invited out there to perform, then them wanting me to be in the group by complete accident or or fate, if you will, um, <laughs> John Feldman had heard about me joining this group. So now John Feldman, who's now my brother-in-law, um, finds out that I had joined Escape the Fate and he had come out to the key club to see that black on black tour. And I guess he left that show going, uh, there was something about that singer that I really, really liked. But there was something about that band I really, really liked. And that was it. Like, he left the show. Oh, yeah, that singer was pretty good. That band was pretty good. Once he found out that that singer had joined that band, he was he called up Joey, the right Joey, and he said, I want them to come into my studio immediately. I want to be the guy that does the album. So 
within a month of Robert saying, yeah, we want him in the band if he wants to be, we were in a van driving to California to, to do what ended up being This War Is Ours with, with Feldman. That's amazing. So it was and- kind of like everything happened so quick by chance, by accident, by fate, whatever you want to call it. It was, it was pretty nuts. Other Joey, who's our friend from a Skylar drive is probably like, what the f- Craig never called, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Craig, He's like, what, an, what an asshole. <laughs> Lizzie, I'm going to let you ask another question here in a second, but Craig, did you bring any hot sauce? Oh yeah, hot sauce. Hold on, give me two seconds. Let me go. I'll take before the before you grab it, before you grab it, uh, <laughs> we we do a trivia segment. I want to know what movie or TV show have you seen the most? Where if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, it's impossible to stump you because you've seen it so many times. Ooh. Oh my god, I don't know if I I have some sriracha. That'll work. Or some tapati- tapatio. Let's go with tapatio. Hell yeah. Um, Pratt, man, I don't know if I'm familiar enough with anything at this point where I'd be able to answer like every obscure question about it. I'll keep them somewhat easy, but let's just say like your favorite movie of all time. My favorite movie of all time? Dude, I'm one of those people that can never pick just one. So it's always like a top five or top ten. But for right now, I'm going to have to go with Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Excellent. Hell yeah. Lizzie, go ahead and shoot a question. Let me find some Bill and Ted trivia. Uh Uh-oh. So, okay. When, let's see, it was what, like the early 2010s, I think. Um, It was you guys, it was Asking Alexandria, you know, that whole era for me that got me into, like, the whole metalcore kind of genre. Who was it for you? I know you mentioned Silverstein, but who else did you have that kind of got you into it and influenced you? The bands that got me into it? um, Growing up, I was into, like, Aerosmith, Queen, Journey, Motley Crue. Uh, Getting a little bit older, I was into 50s rock and roll, which is why I ended up playing the saxophone in high school. Um, And then was really into hip hop for a while. And then Linkin Park came out. And Linkin Park was like (laughs) the best of both worlds in my mind. Mm -hmm. Loved Chester's voice, his heavy vocals. Oh, my God. And he was the segue into the first band that really opened up my horizons to all the bands that I ended up loving and wanting to be in a band today was the used. So it was Chester and Lincoln park that led me into Burt and the used that just led me into the rabbit hole. And then, you know, from there it was under oath. And then I wanted to get into some heavier bands and it was like, as they lay dying and it dies today. I used to jam that record front to back every single day. And, then, you know, then I really wanted to be in a band. And within like a year of starting a band, I was just out on the road, been on the road ever since. Can you still play the sax? I don't know. I haven't tried. It'd be cool to bust I out a little. I probably still play it, but a little play lick it well. real quick. I'm not sure, yeah. <laughs> Let's try sit down with it. Let's try some Bill and Ted trivia. I'm going to keep it relatively easy, I think. In Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, can you name either one of the princesses that they pick up at the at the in medieval England? Oh my God! I think Aunt Anna, Princess Anna. What do you What do you think the second second one's name is? They always just call them the princesses, so it's so difficult. I'm gonna give it to yeah. you. I'm gonna give it to you. It's Joe Anna. Yeah. Joe yeah. Anna. So I'll give it to you. I'll do the hot sauce. Mount Fuji Magma is what I have chosen. Um, I, before I do it though, I, I, we always <laughs> have more questions. Sauce. Yeah, so I have to drink it now because I couldn't stump you. But um, nice. I, I know there's been talks of doing an actual Craig solo album, like a self-titled album over the years. Can we ever expect that? Not a Dead Rabbits, not Escape to Fate, just a Craig solo album. 
Yeah, for sure. I just need to, um, you know, I need to find the right people to make it and, and decide what I want it to sound like. You know, Dead Rabbits kind of started off as when I flew out to uh, Caleb's place in Ohio, uh, Caleb Shomo, he did the first Dead Rabbits EP right when he was like forming Beartooth and working on some of the first songs that would ultimately turn into the monster that Beartooth is. And I'm so happy for him. Um, That started off as a solo project, but the music just... And ended up coming out heavy, full band thing. And I remember having a conversation with Caleb. I'm like, no, nah, I need to think of a band name because I, I imagine myself on the road with a full band walking out on stage with a with a backdrop that just says Craig Mavitt's really weird. <laughs> like, I don't think I'd be able to do that. That's that's bizarre. Like, it might as well just be a band. And he's like, yeah, whatever you want, man. So now Dead Rabbits is Dead Rabbits, but... Yeah, I really want to do something. I want it to be a lot different than what I usually do. And uh, I'm getting closer and closer to figuring it out and figuring out who I want to work with. Um, And you can tell by how many DJs I've been guesting on lately. So I think I kind of want to go go a route like that. Really? So it wouldn't be like... I'm sorry. It's got to be completely different than what I do in, in... any of the groups I've been in or still am in. Because you know Never I mean? Never Be, be is really different from from all the other projects that you're involved in. So I was just wondering if it was going to yeah. have like that kind of sound. That that I liked that one a lot, but that still ended up being a little too just acoustic rock, which is not what I would want a solo album to sound like. You know, and even that Never Be song, I'm like, ah, you know, I kind of even did that with Let Me Be with ETF or harder than, you know, or, or, you know, songs like that. So just trying to, trying to narrow it down and get it right. I got you. Lizzie, go ahead and uh, shoot off another one. What were some of the, I guess, reject names when you were coming up with the dead rabbits name? Cause dead Ra- rabbits is kind of a oddly specific thing. So what were some of the other ideas? You there, had? Was, there was no reject names. That was the first one. It was when I was. That was it? Yeah, when I was thinking of band <laughs> names, I was like, "No, nah, Dead Rabbits has got to be it." Because yeah. still to this day, still to this damn day, I will see an interview or a flyer or something for promotion, and it's so easy for people to spell Mabbit like Rabbit because mm-hmm. Rabbit is R A B B I T, just one T. My last yep. name has two T's. So when I thought of Dead Rabbits, it it made a lot of sense. Cause it, people always spell my last name like rabbit. Anyway, I was watching gangs of New York all the time at the time too. And I love that movie. That's a gang in the movie, dead rabbits. Um, and I was born in the year of the rabbit. So when I thought of the name, I guess the only reject name I could say was a reject was the correct spelling of rabbit because dead rabbits is also two T's. Yeah. I'll so I it. went ahead and just spelled rabbit <laughs> wrong. <laughs> As <laughs> as someone that that's also heavily tattooed like yourself, are you planning to ever do the throat right in the Adam's apple area? Oh yeah, at some point. I just want to get more of my body covered before I start moving up up the throat and stuff like that. Are you a sports fan? No. No no sports at all. Not even football, nothing. No, not really a sports guy. I mean, I'll go to sporting events and I'll have a good time. That's and, cool. like, I'm able to sit down with other sports fans when they're watching, like, the big game, the playoffs or the Super Bowl. And I could get into it and be like, so who are you going for and root for the <laughs> other team? But <laughs> They're like, you, you know, bastards. like, Robert, for instance, he does all the fantasy football yeah, stuff yeah. and gets really into it and knows, knows every player's name and their history and their background and every injury that they ever have. Or, <laughs> and I just, I'm one of those people, too. I'm obsessed never, with, with football. Never been me, yeah. <laughs> what what are you afraid of? Do you have any phobias? Oh man, I feel like I have too many phobias to list. It's one of those things where it's like I have anxiety about having anxiety and I overthink my overthinking and I have mm-hmm. a fear of of fear. You know, it's so stupid, but that's just always how my brain has worked. Um 
but I guess a more common natural fear that I can say is flying. I don't know why or when I developed a fear for flying and I have to do it all the time for tour, but it just randomly happened. Like every now and then I'll have to just sit there, close my eyes, my hands will get a little clammy and I'll just like say a little prayer inside and just be like, I, you know what, if this is it, this is it, I guess. So we actually had, uh, this is kind of a serious question. We had, uh, we had Max Green on last week. And he was an absolute delight. I know that you guys are still somewhat close. He went on uh, the tour recently. He he brought up something that I wasn't expecting. He said that during that previous tour that, that you guys did together, that he would cry every night during the first three ETF songs. As I imagine, he still considers it his baby and whatnot. Has there ever been talks with Rob about reconsidering Max into the group? Um, there was never like an official, official talk that came up because, you know, the Kevin thing was happening right around that tour and we were getting ready to lock in Eric and Maddie and Eric has been playing bass for us for six years. And so we just officially locked him in. So it's just like, we can't really have the discussion because we're not planning on giving anybody the boot. Right. You know, it's like, I guess if somebody left on their own terms just because they didn't want to be in the group anymore, then I mean, I, at least me personally, I would highly, highly consider it. And it would definitely be like my first call and first choice. Um, Cause yeah, we, we still are close. I still love him. And heck, I just officiated his wedding. I, I married him and his wife and I was so you're you're ordained a new music video you're ordained i was ordained for his wedding yeah awesome that is cool Aww. hell yeah <laughs> i got ordained online then found out it wasn't necessarily a hundred percent legally binding even though i paid like 150 bucks for this <laughs> minister package like everything you need to officiate a wedding i'm like well i need to get that yeah got it i felt i felt nervous the morning of the wedding so i decided i would call the clark county court in vegas or marriage office or whatever just to double check and luckily they said yeah that's not what you need and you need to call us 30 days prior and i'm like well i'm in from out of town on the weddings tonight so can i please talk to somebody that can help me and the sweetheart <laughs> of a lady got on the phone and said listen honey if you, you got to take this online test if you ace the test and you could get down here by 2 p.m and you bring in the funds to pay for it. I'll expedite it, hand you what you need in person right now. You don't have to wait for the 30 days. So, and that's I what happened. Online and thankfully, wow. Yeah, I aced, aced the test somehow. Hell yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. Went down there and got it. Yeah. <laughs> well done, sir. <laughs> Lizzie, I think we've got time for maybe two or three more each at the most. Uh, you want to start us off with one, a couple of your final questions. So we saw you last week in Garden Grove. I wanted to know what you thought of Hollywood Nightmare and Through the Oculus. Are you able to catch the opening oh, bands awesome. during those? They were awesome. I caught one song from each band. This is the second time we did Garden Grove, and both times my wife flew out. So anytime I have family or like the kids or the wife there, it always kind of pulls me away from doing what I would do if I was there by myself, like checking out the bands or, or things like that. So I was able to catch a song from both groups and they were both really, really awesome. And obviously are killing it because I was surprised to learn that it was sold out that night because we had just mm -hmm. played there like four months ago, five months ago. And it was, we were main support to Hawthorne Heights but Red Jumpsuit Apparatus was also playing it. So it was, in my opinion, a pretty stacked package. So to come back and sell it out, it was, it was great. So all the bands killed it. Yeah. What is your favorite video game of all time? You spent more hours on this game than any other game. Ooh. I'd say the most hours, probably Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. It's, it's one of the best. <laughs> yeah playstation one seven. days lately no i'm sure i've drained more hours in other things as of late but i mean growing up that's still got to be the game I've, I've put the most hours into everyone has a worse show of their life 
what is the worst show you ever played in any project? Everything went wrong at this show. Uh, you know what? I'm uh, I'm just going to have to say the worst shows that I've ever played, I probably don't remember. They're probably the ones that I don't remember. Fair enough. Which is terrible, which is terrible to say, but they're a blur. Those are definitely them. I have heard of I heard about them the next day and was very embarrassed and full of shame and guilt and when, all the horrible stuff. When when doing and Lizzie, I'm gonna kick it to you in a second. When doing research for this, I had no idea that you actually started the word alive. I thought that that was just like a project that you ended up joining and doing all the demos for. Was it was it hard to not continue with that? I imagine the Escape the Fate stuff and the Skylet story that we just heard kind of involved that, but you it seemed like you put a lot of time and effort in the, to those badass demos. Was it hard to walk away from the word alive? So I I didn't walk away from the word alive. Oh. So this this is this is even crazier stuff. So going back to all the less to fall to a skylight to playing those shows with escape the fate. There's a period of time right there where I had played the last show with ETF and I was still unsure what was going to happen. So I remember calling Robert and Max and Monty and all of them. And I said, Hey, I know how difficult it is to replace a singer. Um, I went home to Arizona. I started the word alive. <laughs> I was like, let me just start a new band. We started playing some shows, recording some demos. Things were going really, really good until I got that call from Joey again saying, we we really need you back, like, for real, real, real. We need you to come and do this. So once I did that and we got in the studio with Feldy and we finished the record, all this crazy stuff happened where Word Alive was getting record deals. I was talking to Epitaph about signing Word Alive. They said, absolutely interested. We just need to finish releasing This War Is Ours first. We can't release two albums at once. So I was sitting here trying to finish the ETF stuff and promote that. I had the Word Alive getting upset that they were waiting and didn't want to feel like a side project. And then I also had some of the Bless the Fall guys showing up to the Word Alive performances saying that they wanted me to come back. So it was like... Busy man. It was weird, <laughs> weird times. So eventually I had finished a tour with ETF. I, what tour was it? I feel like it was the... I think it was Chiodos, Silverstein, ETF. Who else was on it? I know for a fact it's Chiodos. But I got home from that tour and I remember being told, hey man, have you seen have you seen your band's MySpace page? I was like, what do you mean? They're like, we're alive. Go check it out. And I went to go check it out and I could not log in. I don't know why I couldn't log in. I ended up finding out all the passwords had been changed. They released new photos with a new singer and they had signed to a record label and they were going off and doing it. So that happened. <laughs> so it was just they just surprised you. In, but but yeah, inside you to, wanted to juggle all of them. Yeah, it was like Word Alive was my baby. It's like this band I put together with a bunch of local AZ boys, and then they kind of just got eager and kind of nixed me out of out of my own group at the time. You know, so back then it was extremely upsetting, but I very very quickly didn't care and supported them because it's like, dude. I'm sitting here super busy with ETF. Like I wanted these guys to be in the band with me because there's some local boys that have been grinding just like I've been grinding. Like best of luck to you. I'm not mad. You know, I still love all those dudes. We've done so much together over the years now. So there's zero hard feelings whatsoever, but I don't like, I don't like holding grudges. Yeah. I like that. Lizzie, what would your final question be for Craig? Ow, sorry, I hit my knee on my desk. <laughs> um, Are you okay? Actually, yeah, yeah, it's good. <laughs> I actually, I don't have another question. I just wanted to say um, thank you for sharing your sobriety story and stuff. Um, I'm coming up on five months myself, 
So it's just really hey. inspiring to hear other people's stories and feel better about my decision. So thank you. Well, you should feel very proud of yourself because those first those first few months are the hardest. Yeah, definitely. So it definitely gets easier and you'll just continue to feel more and more and more proud of yourself. Thank you. It's a lifelong thing, though, <laughs> so stick with it. You know? Yeah. Hell yeah. The first few months are the most difficult and then you start you start remembering why you began doing what you were doing in the first place because they always say it's not the drinking or the using that was the problem or is the problem. That always became a problem because it was the solution to something else that you're trying to bury. Oh yeah. So once you become sober, you start those memories start coming to the surface and you start realizing things, but that's how you can really tackle it in a healthy way and actually grow. So you're not just stuck in that addictive cycle, you know, the addictive self-destructive cycle anymore, which is no way for anybody to live. Yeah. Craig, my final question, and I very much appreciate your time, sir, is uh, it is called local band smoke out. I'm wondering if there's a common mistake you see local bands making it's just not your place to be like, guys, you're doing it wrong. But but what advice would you be would it be to uh, a smaller band that's trying to eventually get to your position? Um, I would say just just I guess know your place. Sometimes we'll we'll play with some local bands that kind of have an attitude, and it makes no sense. It's like aren't you stoked to be here, man? Like playing a show, like what, what's up with the dude? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, that would be my best advice. Sometimes every now and then it's happened. It hasn't happened a lot, but it has happened. We've played shows with local bands that will cover us. So I would recommend any local bands. Like if you're playing with a band, maybe you don't cover that band song. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That would be very, it's like, opening for Metallica and playing Enter Sandman yourself. You're like, what are you doing? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, I would say don't do that, but but just go out there go out there and kill it and be happy that you're there. You know what I mean? You gotta have confidence. There's a fine line between confidence and just being Robert. <laughs> <laughs> being a Robert. Hell yeah. We love Rob too. Do Craig, this is a pleasure, man. Uh, you, you always kill it every time I've seen you perform. Uh, you're just Thank you. you're you're down to earth, kind soul. Congratulations on your three years, and uh, of being Thank of being you. sober. And uh, hopefully, we can do this again sometime in the future. But have a fantastic rest of your day. We look forward to the Escape Thank the Fade album much. that's in the works. That's going to be a little bit darker, but that's it should be exciting. Have yourself a fantastic day, ladies and gentlemen. Craig yeah, Rabbit. Hell yeah. Thank you, man. The Stone Cold said so. <laughs> Let me know anytime you want me to jump on, man. Thanks, brother. Cheers. You guys have a good one. Peace. You guys well.